Um, Anja is staying with us for a little bit and she can also answer the questions in the chat as we get ready to move on to our next presenter for the day. Um, and I'm going to check with Jim. Jim, I guess you're awake, ready and raring to go. <laughs> <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> um, very much so. Um, I have to say that um, my presentation, unless uh, I beat Anya's records for the number of questions, is going to be shorter than the 30 minute slot. So honestly, if there's another couple of questions coming in, because I find this topic super interesting myself. Um, and so if there are a couple of extra questions that we haven't had a chance to talk through for this last session, please take the next couple of minutes to do that. So there's no disappointment, because um, I think there's a little bit of flexibility with the amount of time that I need. Actually, maybe um, if I can sort of step in, um, just to link it between the two sessions also, because Jim, you're going to talk about the use of cash um, and voucher, and I'm not going to use any terminologies in case I use the mm. wrong one for different people. Um, but, you know, like how cash or voucher is used uh, in camps, mm. um, not just from other sectors, but also, you know, like for cash for shelter, cash for food, um, but also how camp management um, operations can also utilize um, cash for the purpose and objective of, of well, of camp management, basically. Mm -hmm. But maybe I put the question back to Agnes on whether, you know, if assistance come in the form of something that is not in kind, that is not services, um, what should be like the big considerations for inclusions, uh, like in planning and implementation of those activities? Can you repeat, sorry, uh, one, I was answering a comment from Alex. Yeah. Yeah, no, because we're gonna talk about cash next. So I just okay. wondered whether there's a particular consideration we need to put into practice while doing that. Well, cash-based uh, cash intervention, uh, can be really helpful uh, for persons with disabilities. And this can be a good way around indeed, like having to walk long distance or having to carry heavy items or having to, uh, to, yeah, to, to move around for persons with disabilities uh, while receiving the assistance. At the same time, there have been a number of lessons learned also on this, and we should really uh, conduct uh, serious uh, vulnerability and risk assessment before doing so. Uh, as this can also uh, create more harm. Uh, we have seen this in a few locations uh, where actually the cash was never reaching the person with disabilities, but were uh, taken by family members, caregivers, used for uh, other uh, purpose. So we have had like mixed experiences about it. We consider it as a good practice, but we need to really ensure that the safeguards are, are there too, and we really need to, to monitor uh, our actions in this regard. Uh, we need close monitoring uh, to be able to do so. Perfect, thank you. Are there any particular question in the chat that you would like to answer live or, or spoken? I don't know what the word is. I was just looking at the question from Alex. Uh, what happens when partner in the camp do not factor in person with disabilities in terms of their service provision? For instance, distance to food distribution sites, what approaches can work? Um, this is a good question. Uh, and uh, probably we also have a role here because they should factor it. Uh, it is a responsibility of all. And this is something that uh, they should take into consideration. Uh, we have a role to play in terms of advocacy. Maybe they are not aware, not con conscious about conscious about uh, the diversity that exists in the camp. So we should uh, advocate uh, to partners, uh, contractors, uh, to to factor their needs. Um, this is uh, something uh, also like make sure that the distribution points, for instance, are accessible. Uh, make sure that uh, distribution points uh, can be accessed easily by persons with disabilities, maybe create a separate distribution uh, for persons with disabilities uh, in some cases when it is feasible. Uh, there are 
plenty of um, possibilities, but we can and we should raise awareness also uh, among our partners, contractors, so that they take into consideration these needs. Thank you, Agnes. I'm seeing question from Omar um, about what do you think about um, segregation of people with disability in one sector in a camp? Um, no, well, this is, uh, it doesn't sound like a good idea uh, to me. Uh, segregation should be avoided, of course, I think, and uh, probably, basically, uh, the estimate, the global estimate says that 15% of the world population uh, has a disability. It's a huge amount of population. Uh, this stat goes to one person, uh, maybe one out of five beyond the age of 60 that we have also a disability. So mm. it's like segregating person with disability in a part of a camp is not uh, a, a, feasible and is not reasonable, I don't think it can be recommended. Uh, and of course, they should never be separated from their families and their caregivers uh, who can have a vital role uh, working close to them. Thank you, Agnes. Um, cool. I think, I hope you're going to stay and join us also for the CBI conversation, Agnes, because I'm seeing some question that relates to to both um, from uh, Julie as well. So I'm gonna, Jim, I'm gonna hand over to you um, to talk about the camp manager's guide to, to cash-based intervention. Cool, thank you very much, Juan. Um, give me a second just to share my screen and then we can kick off. And if I get that. Um, we can see your slide perfectly. Excellent. Uh, so I'm here today um, to talk about a new resource that's uh, being launched uh, by IOM uh, called the Camp Manager's Guide to CBI. Um, uh, Juan has already alluded to the fact that uh, there are various uh, variants of the of the terminology and the acronyms. Um, the one that's been chosen here is CBI, cash-based interventions. Um, needless to say, this does talk more widely about uh, cash, whether it's restricted, whether it's conditional, whether it's vouchers, ways of transfers. So please let's not get hung up too much on the specific acronym. Um, but I am very happy to, to be part of this launch uh, and also uh, very honored to thank probably quite a few people who are here today uh, in this meeting who have contributed uh, to the, the creation of this guidance, um, which has actually been ongoing for one, about three years now almost. <laughs> I think I, I've, I came in at the one and a half year mark. Um, but uh, so thank you everybody um, who has contributed to this over this long gestation period. Um, but I'd just like to sort of introduce it uh, and to do so uh, with the next slide, which I think is probably the most important. Uh, well, no, the next slide after that's the important one. This is the front cover. This is important too, because this is how you know that you've got the right booklet. Um, this is the front cover. Um, it's pretty recognizable. It uh, shares the same sort of design as a lot of the other uh, guidance that's been coming out. Um, and I think at the end of this session, uh, Juan will be sharing a link uh, so that everybody can download it. It's a free PDF. Um, it is the um, it is the trial version. So uh, please, 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 um, as soon as this uh, session is over, as soon as you see the link, please go ahead and download it and uh, have a look through and tell us what you think and tell us uh, how, how we can improve it. Um, it is a trial version and hopefully it will get revised and improved through this process. And this is part of the reason why we're so happy to launch it today with such a large forum. Um, and that is the, the most important slide. If you 
get your PDF or if you ever get a printed version and you open it up, the first page there on the right hand side of your screen says very clearly, don't panic. Um, a lot of the reason why there is this, uh, this booklet is uh, because there's so many questions, I won't say panic, but questions about CBI um, coming through camp management actors. And the first one is that uh, CBI cash is a way of achieving goals, is a way of achieving camp management goals or supporting other actors in camps or camp-like settings to achieve other program goals. Um, a lot of it, you already know, it's already good programming principles. And for what you don't know, there's a lot of resources. This is the general table of contents. Um, just to say what it isn't, there's so many resources, as I said, already about, on the one hand, the specifics of CBI, CVA cash programming out there, and they're all linked up in, in this booklet. And there's also so much stuff that we know about camp management. There's so many resources for that. Um, this booklet will not tell you everything about cash and it won't tell you about camp management. It basically is about how those two interlink, interrelate. Um, I think the, the most important things looking down uh, through section B is just to define in terms of working in camps, camps like settings, um, what constitutes CBI and what doesn't. Um, and then looking in section C, uh, splitting it out. So one section is about the uses of CBI for camp management by camp management actors. And then the other one is what do camp management actors need to know when there's all sorts of other actors, service providers, also planning to use or already using CBI in their programming, whether that's multi-sectoral or single sector objectives. And then talking very much and linking very much with the last section, uh, with the last presentation, sorry, um, what are the risks? Uh, what are the risks? What can we see which might be potential barriers for accessibility? And what are the mitigation measures that we can do for that? We all know that when there's a crisis, when there's a disaster, um, it can throw things up in the air, that there may be large scale displacement, there may be an increase in protection issues, um, there may be uh, splitting of families, all of those things we know about, but there's a lot of stuff that actually happens also to markets and the markets will always be there inside the camps, inside the sites, around the sites. And so we need to know that those crises, those disasters can affect the local markets and supply chains. They can reduce com commodity and service availability. They can increase or destabilize, and my hand is chopping up and down there, um, prices, not just in the first market you go to, but that sort of last mile, last chain of the market. Um, they can create inflation. And we need to know what sort of questions that are coming up from our field teams, from our partners, uh, from other stakeholders. Um, those questions concerning CBI in the camp might be about technical capacity, might be about guidance, um, whether that's guidance for the CBI programming itself or how that combines with other sectoral goals. What do standards mean if cash CBI is relatively unconditional? Um, how can we make sure that we're all on the same page? What are the common approaches? And how can we monitor that we're still going in the right direction and we're doing no harm. And a good point made by Wan, how do we go and see the potential beyond just support for individual households, um, but also how do we coordinate that and how do we see support through CBI for some of those core camp management goals of 
uh, empowering communities and improving communities' own governance and own management. This is another of the sort of core diagrams you can see in the booklet um, that the channels by which, whether it's cash, whether it's vouchers, whether it's gifts, um, comes into a camp setting is very, very various. And the way that it can be distributed is obviously very various and can be very complex. In the middle, there's that sort of uh, little uh, cartoon of, of cash vouchers, etc. But we could also change that diagram and put in the middle somehow all of the camp management actors and what is the role that they have monitoring, coordinating all of those different channels, both for single sector or multi sector programming purposes, but also for camp management itself. And some of the ways that cash can be used goes way beyond the ideas of just, um, you know, single distribution to single households. Uh, it can be something which is aiming more at starting businesses or developing professional skills. Um, it can be to support construction or rehabilitation uh, combined with technical support, whether that's for shelters or other individual household structures, or whether it's for community, uh, including infrastructure uh, projects. Um, or it can be in the form of grants to, again, start up livelihoods or enhance businesses. So there's a wide range of things that we probably have already seen happening in many of the places that we are already working. I just want us to say, um, coming to the end of the presentation, um, and I see that there's more and more comments and questions coming through that uh, Juan and I will be looking at in a second. Thank you very much. Um, firstly, uh, maybe to already answer some of those questions, this booklet um, links to a number of other resources. Uh, it links very obviously uh, within sort of IOM world to uh, some of the other resources that have been developed um, or are already on the launch pad, including the uh, direct uh, um, guidance for CBI. It also is linking to um, the camp management standards. Uh, secondly, it's we try to make it as operational, operationalized, something like that, um, workable and usable as, as possible. Um, and it, to that end, a lot of the booklet is going beyond just the basics of vocabulary and principles, but talking about what are the risks and what are the mitigation measures? What happens as a program or a project starts? What are the likely reactions? What happens next? Um, and then, as I said, just to really emphasize that we are looking beyond, not ignoring, uh, but looking beyond the sort of traditional individual distributions to looking firstly at community projects, but also how it enhances camp management's own goals and camp management's own program objectives as well. Um, in a minute, uh, Juan will be putting a link on. Again, please, please, uh, this is the launch. Um, the launch happens only when people actually <laughs> get it into their laps and have a look. Um, so we will be putting a link up there. Uh, please uh, let us know what you think, um, good or bad or missed opportunities. Um, and other than that, I think I'm gonna close this presentation and close and close my screen, but come back for, for any questions or comments. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, I see that you're going to set precedent for other people to basically book for longer time slot and then appear like you're doing really good at timekeeping. Um, it's, we've got 11 minutes for questions. I, I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I think people, it's perfect. People like asking questions. Wow. Uh, I mean, this is one of, the, one of the interesting things about Zoom is it's actually not so easy to see <laughs> what the comments are until you stop sharing your screen. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, 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 oh. Um, it's, it's like sort of suddenly unwrapping presents. Um, thank you, everybody, for all of the comments. Um, 
Should yeah. we go through those first, or yeah, I can give you a quick um, read the comments whilst you're following on for a second. Yeah, I just want to because I have shared the um, the link to the guidance itself. We would really like to hear back from you if you do if when when you do download it have a look or use it. It's basically an open source of, um, well, it's open resource basically from outside. Um, if you have any feedback, comments, suggestions on what you would like to see or other recommendations, we would re be really happy to, to, you know, to hear back from you. Um, obviously it's like, I mean, despite being in development for over a period of time, we've also done consultations with IOM colleagues uh, from the field as well. Um, but I think it's only when you put them into practice, then we can you know, really see how it works or doesn't work. I think in, in our previous days meeting, we talked a lot about like, you know, there's like some really complex issues that we're trying to handle and, and negotiate and, and, and I think it's the balance of making it simple enough that you can train and then apply and implement and, and make it useful. Um, so, you know, any feedback on that would be greatly appreciated. Um, I see that uh, Julie from our CBI support team also mentioned that uh, the team here has put together, has done some kind of literature review on disability inclusion. Uh, related to cash-based interventions. Um, if you're interested to hear more about that or how that is um, been going, um, they developed a checklist. Did they? Julie, co correct me if I'm, if I'm reading your comments wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but she's also put in um, her email or their team's email address um, should you have any other questions. Or I think it's as we move further, I mean, I think it's important these become shared resources um, and for anyone to, to use, really. Uh, so, Jan is asking, um, Jim, are you seeing this? Yep, I can. I'll read it out uh, from, from my old buddy, Jan, uh, <laughs> always the one <laughs> to give the interesting questions at 9.52 in the morning. Um, <laughs> is cash programming in humanitarian responses the mirror of using iPads to raise a child. Not always what they need, but always what they want. Hmm. Um, well, Jun, I'm not sure if I'm qualified to comment on <laughs> child rearing practices in Southern Norway. However, in terms of CBI, um, I, I think, you know, many people want cash because of very obvious reasons in terms of uh, own decision making in terms of dignity, in terms of ownership, in terms of security, feeling that you don't have something that's got to go now, that you can keep something in your back pocket. So it's very obvious why uh, there is, um, I won't say a, a, a want all the time, but why there is a popularity for these approaches amongst the potential beneficiaries. I think where the, the guidance has a strength is that it does talk about um, what it means for conditionality uh, for cash, that cash might be given as a condition for doing something broadly, and what it means for restriction about how uh, actors can sometimes, if necessary, limit the ways in which CBI tools, vouchers, for instance, can be used for restricted types of materials or restricted types of activities or restricted types of goals. Um, so I, th I think uh, that comes in and we've tried to make sure that it's again, not just the general principles of the thing, but also what that really means for camp management actors specifically. Thanks. <laughs> And again, we won't tell your children anything about your babysitting by iPad tendencies. <laughs> it's interesting. I think like back when I was in Pakistan, maybe 2010, I remember like a colleague of mine saying, well, my boss telling me that cash is the only commodity that can be turned into any other com commodity, you know? And I think, it's, I think it's more like the moment when you allow your children to choose what they want to wear for the day. 
you know, rather than the <laughs> iPad <laughs> or eat. But, um, okay, uh, this definitely, Alex is pointing out some challenges, um, like blacklisting of SIM cards or swapping SIM cards. I guess, yeah, I mean, as soon as you put technologies mm. into the mix, no, Jim, it's become mm. even more challenging. Mm. I mean, certainly there's quite a bit of discussion about the, some of the pros and cons of different ways of transferring. I have to say most of the discussion in this book is not about technology. Um, everybody who's ever owned a fax machine will tell you that technology of today can become obsolete. And so most of the discussion in the booklet is actually more about um, engagement with stakeholders, engagement with the communities and with the affected population. Um, for the specifics of technology, there are other resources and this booklet does point you out in that direction. Um, and some of the other resources will be coming if you look at the, uh, some of the, the links that have already popped into the chat uh, for some of the things more specifically from the CBI team. Um, so, there is no mention of what to do with good or bad SIM cards, um, but there is a sort of pointing out to answer some of those technical questions. Um, and there's also one question, I guess, uh, coming through from Shang Musa about um, COVID-19 stuff. Um, there isn't anything there, um, you know, What's, what's the old John Lennon quote? Um, Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. Um, so, uh, <laughs> you know, events have over, overtaken us a little bit on that. Um, but generally speaking, um, there is quite a large section about do's and don'ts, about accessibility, uh, and about making sure that spaces are safe for that. Um, I also would like to make a slight off-topic advert for next week. Uh, when, for <laughs> better or for worse, uh, you'll be seeing my face on this screen again uh, for the physical environment sessions uh, next Tuesday afternoon, uh, Geneva time. And there, there will be a lot more discussion more centrally about um, uh, camps, camps-like settings and, and, the, and the outdoor spaces, the physical environment um, in times of pandemics. Um, so get back to us for that one. That's also going to be very exciting, I think. Um, but otherwise, no, nothing specific in this booklet about that, except for the general uh, discussion about what it means for camp management actors to ensure that there are safe spaces, safe accessibility, and safe use of, uh, of any of those CBI interventions and CBI uh, methods. Thank you very much, uh, Jim. Um, I think it's, I mean, I, for me in particular, uh, it's, it's also really interesting because of the responsibilities of camp managers for when other people and other sectors are using cash in the camp. Um, you know, I think as much safeguarding or designing of the program that can be put into place to ensure that, you know, things are used to achieve like desired objectives. Um, you know, what happened if there's a program, but, and then there's still people, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's prioritization, right? For, for people. Um, but then what does it mean? Like if there was cash for shelter, but at the end of it, there's a number of people without shelter, you know, for example, and then what's our responsibilities, accountability and engagement with uh, shelter actors. And, and I feel like this is why it gives, puts like camp managers in, in a special kind of position also um, mm. related to this. Yeah, I mean, just in the last minute before, before I, I step back, I mean, there is this sort of classic case, isn't there, where in one location, there's an education actor who wants to give cash to the, the most needy, most vulnerable, bottom 5%, and there's a food security 
actor that also wants to target the bottom 5% for cash. And there's a shelter actor that also wants to target that most, most vulnerable, most needy bottom 5% for another. And suddenly you find that it's the same bottom 5%, although the danger is that it's the same uh, bottom 5% most needy, most vulnerable, who suddenly starting to get four or five different cash grants at once. And those who are in the sixth percentile, who just missed out, uh, are getting nothing. Um, and are sort of wondering why they're getting nothing. And so you can start to see lots and lots of risks on that. Um, and so some of that discussion in the booklet is precisely that sort of diagram of lots of arrows going in and lots of arrows going out and trying to wonder <laughs> you know, how to make sure that it is still equitable, it is still right space, mm. it is still, uh, and, and also looking at those larger community uh, objectives as well. Um, you know, what does that mean for community governance, community empowerment and things like that? Perfect. Thank you. I see Francisco has also shared um, resource on if you want to know more about use of CBI during COVID-19. Um, There's some additional resource as well. And yeah, and I think we're, you know, our guidance is obviously focused on for use of camp managers and and we definitely do not want to like duplicate the different efforts that cash uh, like specialized actors and, and agencies are, are involved in and, and already providing really good guidance on different aspects of it. Mm. Cool. Um, so I don't seem to have Richard here yet. 